I started cooking and baking as just a real little girl. Um, and my mother was quite patient in letting me experiment. I mixed and stirred all kinds of concoctions um, and would often uh, try to prepare breakfast and ask my father, um, how is it, Daddy? And he'd say, well, I guess I can choke it down. Uh, but the, my family was gracious in allowing me to, uh, to work with my passion. Um, and as I got older, I, um, I began working in restaurants uh, to supplement income. Uh, I waitressed a lot, I hostessed, I um, ended up managing uh, the Stargate Diner in Harrington and the one in Seaford as well. Um, and I also decorated those uh, restaurants, uh, which happens to be another one of my passions is, uh, is decorating. And so for many years, I had entertained the dream of my own place. Um, and I had talked to business owners, different places here in, in uh, Sussex County particularly, sharing my dream of a small cafe, bakery, gift shop. And I would hear comments like, um, interesting concept. Um, if anybody can do it, you can. But that's as far as it would go. And I finally met a lady who um, shared my passion, was able to provide the financial backing that I needed um, and the expertise for the business end of things. I do very well with a rolling pin, forget the computer. Uh, I'm a menace with that kind of thing and I've often said they'll probably someday lock me in a room with a rolling pin and say, stay here, you're worse uh, menace to society without knowing what's going on with all that other stuff. <laughs> but anyway, um, so in uh, September of 2013, on the 25th, we opened the doors of Rhonda's House of Treats, and it is a small cafe, bakery, and gift shop. Um, I can seat about 38 to 40 people we have a menu that um, is breakfast and lunch. I wanted to keep the menu small, and I try to offer things that you can't get just anywhere. Um, one being my homemade pies. We roll each crust from scratch. There are no bought pie shells at Rounders. Um, we form our own burgers. We make our own uh, seasoning for the burgers, and we offer those. Um, a lot of times uh, our food takes a bit longer to prepare and people have a bit of a wait when they come to eat there. But it's because we have, um, we try to offer the highest quality that we can and we try to, to uh, cook to order. So we don't have things sitting under lights, we don't have, uh, you know, a lot of prepared things that we throw in a fryer or that type of thing. Um, Quality and freshness is very, very important to me. Um, and I try very hard to run a, a clean, um, efficient facility. I do have a couple of staff members. I have three people that do uh, on, online cooking for me. Uh, we make our own homemade soups fresh every day. Um, and I bake every day. We are closed on Sundays. Uh, we are a Christian-based organization and I want my employees to be able to attend church if they would like to do that. Um, I have a couple of waitresses and a manager, uh, but I am there a big part of the time. Uh, we open at seven in the morning and we close at four in the afternoon. I'm usually there obviously before we open so that I can do my uh, prep work for homemade sticky buns and again, that starts with yeast, it doesn't start with a prepared dough. Um, and so I'm there usually until about 1, 1.30, and then my business partner comes in and she is there until uh, closing and handles all the, the closing accounts and whatnot. Um, we offer on-site catering or we come to your business if you would like that or event that you're having. 
We offer um, sandwich platters, cookie trays. I do wedding cakes, uh, birthday cakes. We're getting ready to do a rehearsal dinner at the shop, and I offer those things after hours. So if you have an event that you would like to do, you would have the whole building. Um, and I sit down and we customize what your particular needs are. Um, for instance, I did a high tea uh, for a Red Hat Society. And we did everything from you know little scones to the whole nine yards, even dressing the part. Um, I, my, my server wore top hat and tails, and we just had a real good time with that. So we, uh, we offer, I think, uh, a wide variety of things for no bigger than we are and no older than we are. I was fortunate in um, that I had a, a group of people that knew me through the businesses that I had worked in previously over the years, the, the many restaurants that I waitressed in, and then also the Stargate Diners, which I did baking for as well as managing. So uh, the word was out there that I, you know, that I did baking, and that definitely helped me in, uh, in getting started. Um, I'm not going to lie that it hasn't been a challenging year. Uh, there's been a lot that I'm learning as I go. Um, a lot of days that I feel like I fly by the seat of my pants, and no two days are the same. Um, you know, you have people coming in with requests that I never heard of, and I try uh, very hard to accommodate what it is that they're wanting. If I don't have the recipe, I try to find it um, and do my best to accommodate um, people, you know, as best I can. Um, I do have some of our menus here. We do takeout orders as well. Uh, we have a website. Uh, that I do not run, <laughs> uh, but you can access that and you can click on to our, um, our cafe, you can do online ordering, we have uh, pictures of, you know, of the restaurant and the gift shop and things like that, our story is on there. Um, and so it's informative, um, and like I said, I have the, the little uh, takeout menus here. Um, that I hope that you can utilize and that you can come and, uh, and visit us at some point. Um, I think that's about all I have. I did bring samples of pumpkin muffins. They were just baked before I came, and I would love for you to try those as well. I'll pass those now. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thank you, Rhonda. <laughs> Questions, comments? Congratulations, Rhonda, for realizing your dream. And your, your menu is making me very, very hungry, and I can't wait for Chris to pass those muffins. <laughs> um, two comments. One, um, I, like I said, your, your menu is, is terrific. Um, just a suggestion, and, and maybe I missed it. Where is your uh, location for your restaurant? And it's not on your flyer, Excuse so you me. might want to just put I, that to me. I failed to mention that. My apologies. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Greenwood, um, Greenwood, Delaware, of course. Um, and my location is right off the highway, right on Route 13 North. If you come into Greenwood and you go to the lights, you make a turn to go north. And we're down there just, uh, I'm not sure, I would say it's less than two miles from the light. On the, on the northbound side of the dual highway. For those of you that may know, it was formerly Peggy's Restaurant, and years before that was the Greenwood Tasty Freeze. So I don't know if that's helpful to those of you that were born and raised in the area or not. But uh, we also have a map on our uh, website. Great, thank you. And just one more comment or question, actually. Okay. Um, I know a lot of people um, grow up and um, they think of themselves as great um, bakers and restaurateurs, and I'm sure you are. Um, but taking that step to actually have a, a, a store, or, you know, a facility, a restaurant, did you have, um, what was your experience going through the permitting process um, for health you know, the health restrictions and guidelines that okay. you, you have I, to meet. 
Okay, thank you. Again, I had had some uh, prior experience with helping to get the, the Stargate diners up and going. And I had a, a wonderful teacher, um, the owner, Darai Salman, who came over as a Turkish uh, person and worked his way up from dishwasher all through the ranks to business owner. Uh, I have a lot of regard for him and he taught me a lot of the process and helped to guide me actually um, in who to talk to, you know, because I had made connections with various people, I knew some of the um, steps to take. And as I went, I met people that were very willing and able to guide me through the process. Um, and again, my, my business partner was helpful in that. The landlord uh, who I'm renting from was very helpful with that. And it was kind of a networking, if you will. Um, so, and I must say that, that the state, um, the public health department itself was very helpful in, uh, in guiding me in, the, in all the, you know, the guidelines and the uh, requirements and all of those things. Um, and I tried very hard to follow what I was supposed to do as I went. I didn't want to be looking over my shoulder. <laughs> Ron, I, I just have a quick question for you. Um, did you have your website prior to your opening or after? After. After. And then did you see a significant increase in your sales once you had a website? I mean, do you get a lot of orders through the website? It's been a slow process. Um, and I wouldn't say that it was uh, significant really after that. It definitely has helped. And we are beginning to get some online orders and things like that. Um, Starting when we did in September uh, was not probably prime time to open a business, particularly with the winter that followed. And there were, I will say, there were days this winter when it cost me more to be open than I made. And um, there were days that I would, you know, feel like, did I make the right choice? And yet I felt, as a Christian, I felt like God had led me to this uh, ministry, if you will. And I would say to him on days like that, God, this is your business. If you want it to succeed, you're going to have to send them in. You know, <laughs> I'm doing what I can do. I'm here. I'm showing up, you know. And so um, as we've, you know, as we've moved along and the weather has gotten better, word of mouth, we have done some advertising, money mailer, newspapers. Um, of course, word of mouth has been our best advertisement. And so slowly the word is getting out, and um, we're getting a nice customer base of repeat. So, um, yeah. Congratulations. I'm really proud of you. We talked early on about your business plan. I know you have one. Um, so it's, it's, it's a little challenging sometimes for us, and we don't think about it when we're in the idea stage of starting a business, especially if we're working with someone else and it's their business. But then we take the big leap and we start our own. You know, at the end of the day, if I work for you, I can walk out the door and say good night and then you take care of the rest. But when it becomes my baby, it becomes my responsibility and I'm accountable for it. Exactly. So what were some of the challenges? Because I know that you were, were a very much involved with Stargate, the two locations, the mm -hmm. diners. Mm -hmm. But then you started your own. My boss would often tell me, you know, he would make comments like, um, my servers make more than I do. I think maybe I should be a server, you know. Or um, I would see him pacing on slow days. He was like a caged lion. And, or on days when the weather was bad and he would, you know, why aren't they here? You know, and I would try to, to soothe him. Uh, but I, and I could feel his pain to a degree. But as a business owner myself, I learned to look at snow a whole lot differently than I did before. I used to say, I love the snow. Let it snow, let it snow. I think twice before I say that now. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, uh, weather has been a challenge. Uh, employees have been a challenge. Uh, I'm finding that you know you can't always depend on your employees. And they don't share the passion for the business that I have, you know? Um, and so just, you know, 
food costs have, have um, been at times surprising to me. When I look at the bill and then I look at my menu and I'm thinking, you know, or then I'll hear someone say, that's awfully expensive for, you know, and I'm thinking if you only knew what I'm putting into it, you know. And so some of those things have been challenging. Um, of course, I've been used to working with the public, but anytime you work with the public in food, I have said that their true colors come out when food's involved. And I don't care if it's a church picnic, in the grocery store, or in the restaurant. If you stop and observe somebody whose food has been presented in a way that they're not happy about, nine times out of 10, you're gonna know it and it's probably not going to be told you in the nicest way, unfortunately. Um, and so things like that have probably been some of my bigger challenges, I would say. You just made a great comment, because I've, I've been there for breakfast and lunch, and you give what I would call nice, healthy portions. Thank you. But at the end of the day, you still have to look at your food you know, your, the cost of what it costs you to give us healthy portions. Has that changed in any way? Uh, we're definitely more aware of what our employees are sending out. And I have one chef, um, happens to be a man, and obviously his hands are bigger than ours. And when he goes to get a serving of fries, you know, and I told him one day, I said, uh, you're going to need to watch the serving size. Your hands are bigger than ours, you know. And so there's things like that that I try to keep a track of, try to keep my eyes on. Of course, I notice if, um, you know, say they're frying an egg and the yolk breaks, toss it in the trash, you know. And I'm thinking, be a little more careful. Accidents happen, but, you know, let's be careful. Or I hear a dish break. Uh, and I'm thinking, ooh, because restaurant dishes are very costly. You know, so I am more aware of that. At the same time, I have told people I will never be rich because I have a heart that gives. And I'll see somebody come in that's having a bad day, and I may end up sending a cupcake with them, you know, or someone that's not feeling well, and I offer a, a peppermint tea that is very comforting and I say let me fix you a cup of tea so the flip side of my endeavor is that I want my little cafe to be a haven if you will I want people to be able to come in there and feel better when they leave than they did when they came and no I will never be a rich woman I didn't start out with that intention I started out with a heart desire to do something that I felt like I was called to do. And um, my goal is to offer the best that I can to my customers. So I don't know if that answers your question. It's kind of a dual answer there. And lastly, across the street is another restaurant. So let's talk about com competitors and competition. Okay. Are we I'm, enemies or are we allies? I'm glad that you brought that up. I have, it's never been my desire to try to put anybody out of business. In my estimation, there's room in Greenwood for both of us. We offer a different enough product that I feel like, okay, so all the old retired guys want to go there for breakfast? Have at it, you know? But maybe the two ladies that want to sit and talk will come to me. Um, I don't. You know, I don't feel any um, vindictiveness at him. In fact, there have been times when I have stood in my little vestibule of my, my, of my shop and prayed for his success on days when I didn't hardly know where my own customers were coming from. Um, and so, no, I don't feel, there is, obviously there is some competitive, I mean, I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I look down there sometimes how many cars does he have? You know, and I do. I mean, I do do that. At the same time, I would never wish him. I would never wish him bad. I want him to be able to succeed as well. I'm interested in hearing about the gifts. You said it was in a gift shop too. Yes. Uh, initially, I started out uh, because I had been manager in the gift shop at Byler's in Dover for three and a half years. 
I learned about a lot of places that you could get uh, particularly primitive things from, which is my thing. And that's originally how my gift shop started out with. Um, and then I started having local people come in and say, well, I make jewelry, or I make soap, or I crochet. Would you have any room in your shop for me? And slowly I started thinking, you know what? It's better to try to help local people get their name out too and support local business. And so most of what I offer now happens to be handmade things from people in the area. Hi, Rhonda. Hi. Um, I'm the owner of Sweet Serenity Chocolates in Seaford, so we have very limited amount of competition, I think, with what we do. But Rhonda and I have met, um, and I want to say I was actually very thankful when I found out you opened uh, last year. I send people up to you all the time for wedding cakes. That's not something that we do. We Thank often you. have customers that come in and ask for that. So I'm very happy that there is someone with a commercial kitchen that's following all the Delaware Health Department rules. So we send people up to you. 10 minutes up the road. Thank you very much. Um, I appreciate it. But my question that. is, how do you and your business partners share your responsibilities? Okay. I have often told people when I introduce her or when I tell people that I have a business partner, she's the brains, I'm the hands and feet. And that is literally how it works. She happens to be handicapped. She's on oxygen. and. Uh, she walks with a cane sometimes. So her uh, mobility is very limited, but she has a brain that doesn't stop. And she had the financial ability uh, where I didn't. And so it's pretty easy for us to divide our, our jobs, if you will, although we do consult each other in decisions that you know we make. Um, if she wants to do some advertising, say, she'll run it by me, or if I have something, an event like this that I was interested in doing, you know, then I'll tell her about that. So we work very closely together, but our, um, our roles are, you know, pretty much financial and hands-on. Do you have that laid out? Like, before you opened, did you discuss specifically what your tasks would be, or do you find that evolving? It kind of has evolved as we've gone along. In fact, I have been, initially, I was looking for somebody to back me financially. And as we went along, I realized that she was much more involved, because I wanted her to be, than I had initially thought. So yes, it has kind of happened as we, you know, it's been a learning process for both of us. It really has. I just wanted to um, congratulate you on the opening of your you. uh, restaurant. Um, certainly, people today are looking for alternative homemade treats for their animals. Have you ever thought about branching into uh, pet treats? Certainly with getting away from organic made diets, um, a lot of people, bakeries are finding success doing dog treats and cat treats as well using very similar products. Um, it's interesting that you say that. Early on, I had just entertained the idea for a short bit, and then when I realized everything that I was dealing with initially, it was a bit overwhelming, and so I tried to kind of keep things, you know. But uh, it's interesting that you say that because just the other day, I uh, saw something about pet treats, and the idea kind of flickered in my brain again. So that may be something that I will entertain if, um, if folks feel like there is a need and a, you know, people would want something like that around here. I don't know, is it offered in the area? T tail bangers, locally. Um, they, I know they do a lot of business with the dog treats. Okay.
Right. I would welcome that. Thank you so much. Good idea. We have time for one more question or comment. One last one. Turnover in the food service industry is very high. How are you hiring and keeping, creating jobs and keeping good trained staff? It has been a challenge. Um, and I have said before that it's interesting when someone fills out an application and you look at it and you think, okay, good credentials here. Do the interview, sounds great. Get them on the floor and you say, is this who I hired? You can say anything in an interview, you know? And so as I've gone along, I've learned a few little tricks. Uh, but I try very hard to create a pleasant work environment. Uh, I try very hard to give kudos instead of lots and lots of, of finding fault. I do tell them if I see something that I don't like, I, but I try to be gracious with that. And I try to, um, you know, recognize small things like birthdays, uh, you know, and just make them feel like they're important individuals in, in the whole scheme of things. They're not just an employee. So that's one thing I think that has helped. Uh, and, and I'm much more careful uh, in trying to figure out what kind of a person I'm dealing with, what kind of a background, what kind of a work history, uh, those kinds of things that, um, you know, may affect their performance at work. Do, do you find that your success is better in a younger age or a Older typically, gen. I say this carefully, but typically I have better success with people over 18, older, the older people. Now, I'm not saying 65, 70. Okay. I'm saying, you know, 25 to, you know, 40, 50 in that age, yeah. The work ethic seems to be different. Rhonda, what can we do as a community to support you and help you grow? Well, for one thing, you can come and try us out. I would welcome that. You can check out our website. You can pass on the information that, that you've heard here today, and I hope it's been helpful to you. Um, and like uh, the doctor said over here, um, connect me with maybe people that could, you know, help me. I, I'm very open. Uh, I'm certainly not one of those people that think that because I've opened a business, I've arrived. I have lots and lots to learn, and the, the more I learn, the more I see that I don't know. So I welcome suggestions. <laughs>